In Auckland, it is the most Auckland thing ever to ask someone what high school they went to when you first meet them. I don't know what it is about Aucklanders in high school history, but this question is so quintessentially Auckland. Um, and I'm obviously a sucker for the city, I'm an epitome of what it means to be from the city of sales, because it's the question and answer that I'm opening this morning with. Kia ora tato, na minui kia koutou katoa, ko Sofia toku ingoa, uh, ni min haos. Happy Chinese Language Week last week. Um, and also, bia ad sasikal from my people to you. Um, my name is Sophia, and I went to a school out in the east of Auckland called the mighty Maclean's College. And I'm sure as soon as I say that, those of you that completed their secondary schooling in this city automatically jump to some assumptions, draw some conclusions, and perhaps even pass some judgments based on that information. Generally, the reaction that I get is, is like, a, oh, you're a Maclean's girl, eh? Um, and, and the questioner usually is progressively shuffling further and further away from me. Um, and you know what? I get it. Somehow, despite not subscribing to those values or ideals or things that we seem to naturally piece together when we're thinking about people from a certain school or a certain institution or a certain group, I know and understand exactly what those values and ideals and things are because they inherently develop and exist as part of this weird thing that we call culture. And there's totally a point to my Auckland shaming of our obsession with needing to know what high school people went to. It's that fundamental idea of how we understand who other people are, and naturally, by extension, how we understand who we are. I know that I'm me, because on some level, I know that I'm not you. I also know that I'm me. I know that I'm a woman, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a Punjabi, I'm sick, I'm also a little bit sick. Um, and if you didn't understand that wordplay, um, talk to me later. Um, <laughs> but I know that I'm all of those things because I've gone through this process of affiliation with what in sociological speak we call an in-group. So the group or the identity that, that is mine. And that is different and, and compared to what we call the out-group. So a culture and a way of being and an identity that is different to mine. And I'm talking about culture and identity and these processes of knowing and existing within these social spheres because this idea of culture is changing. We're living in a time where conventional conceptualizations of culture are no longer the only way to understand these important ideas. Figuring out how culture works in an age of multiplicity, in an age of diversity, in an age of globalization is an idea that I hope is worth spreading to you today. So I mentioned before um, that I'm an educator, uh, and I teach for a lot of different reasons. Um, I teach because for me it's, it's a pursuit of seva, which in my mother tongue, um, translated into my adopted um, tongue, English, uh, means selfless service. I teach because, I don't know if you know, but, but in New Zealand we have this really enduring tale of underachievement for some of the most vulnerable young people in our community, and I can't in good conscience turn a blind eye to that. Um, I also teach because Trust me when I say this, it is the most inspiring thing ever to wake up every morning and go and learn with and for young people, knowing that they're the ones that are going to change the world in a couple of years' time. So I'm also a teacher because I'm fascinated by how schools and the spaces that young people occupy are such crucial places for the developments of a new conceptualization of culture. So I teach at Onihunga High School. Um, anybody know Onihunga High School? Anyone know the area? Yeah. So I teach at Onihunga High School and when I'm walking through the school, when I'm walking through Onihunga Mall Road or down the town centre, um, I'll often hear the number 312 being thrown around. Um, 312. To us, that might just seem like an arbitrary number, yeah? Um, it, it, it's, it's just a random collection of numbers and sometimes it's graffitied on walls behind alleyways. Um, you'll see it on Mangare Bridge, 312. 312 is in fact not just a random collection of numbers, it's an assertion of identity and it's an assertion of a new age culture that I've observed as a teacher at Onihunga High School. And it's the perfect example of the culture that I'm proposing we start centering. Because get this, 312 is actually the bus route between Onihunga and the city centre. Um, and 312 has become an identity. It's a culture, it's a badge of suburban honour for the kids that go to that school. And it was a bunch of young people, um, I don't know if you know Swit It, it's a hip hop group, um, and they, they pretty much wrote a song about 312 and it literally goes for the whole chorus, it's like 312, baby, baby, ooh, 312, baby, baby. <laughs> That's like the whole chorus and it's incredible and it's, and it's amazing and you can almost taste the culture of Onihunga on that song. 
Someone else then developed like a, a, my kids, I went on a geography trip with them to Rotorua last year and they do this like, three, one, two. This is like the hand sign that gets thrown up. They're like, yeah, three, one, two, we're like only hunger hard. Um, and, they, and they do that every time cameras are rolling. Um, and then after that, what happened was um, I, I walk, yeah, walk around Onihunga Mall and I see 312 graffitied all over the walls, right? The flag of 312. This is the manifestation of a new culture. 312 represents some of the complexities of growing up amidst lots of different cultures. Traditional cultural identities have undergone a complete transformation. So young people that grow up with hyphenated identities, so it might be Kiwi Indian, might be um, Tongan New Zealander, might be Chinese New Zealander, Nguyen Kiwi, all of these hyphenated identities occupy a really unique space where they aren't here, but they also aren't there. The formation of this new space facilitates the formation of a new identity and new culture that sits right in the middle. There's a certain distance from the motherland that has resulted in the emergence of a new identity that transcends traditional conceptualizations of culture. And for my kids at my school, it's an identity. It's 312. It's reclaiming that culture. It's a source of pride, mana, belonging. And it's a, it's a title and it's a label that's void of all of the misconceptions of the mainstream for an entire generation of third culture kids. I call them third culture kids because they're not, not exactly Samoan or Tongan and they're not exactly New Zealand. They're, they're, they're in this weird space right over here. Children of immigrants, descendants of the other, you and I, we navigate a space that no one else ever will. And that space is oozing new culture. From this culture comes one of my favorite words ever, one of my favorite ideas ever, community. As a child of diaspora, diaspora being sort of like a scattering of, of people away from the motherland, away from uh, the original geographical location that they're from, being a member of diaspora community is inextricably linked to this idea and this new abstraction of culture. When there's enough of you, or when there's enough of people like you, people that sound like you, look like you, when there's enough of you in a certain area, harboring a similar culture and harboring a similar way of being in the world, community naturally develops because inherently we're people's people. And with the 220 plus recorded ethnicities residing in just Tamaki Makoto, we house, we harbour, we inhabit community on community on community. And if you're following my idea of, of new culture so far, then that 220, that number is bound to grow. There was this dude, a um, really influential guy actually, um, goes by the name Aristotle. Um, and he talks, about, he talks about this idea and he says, hence it is evident that the state is a creation of nature and that man by nature is a political animal. When we think about that philosophically, sociologically, it's being suggested that by nature, we're sociable beings and we're sort of organically drawn to organisation and association via the cultures and communities we exist in. Our changing cultures in today's age of multiculturalism called for a new method of organising in our communities. The way that we build power, the way that we maintain what is unique to our culture, the way we build coalitions to work more meaningfully as a much bigger whole is an incredibly important pursuit. And through community organisation, diasporic communities and new age cultures are able to own their narrative and live their truths. They can identify structures that allow for problem solving, building advocacy and understanding how to formalise identities like 312 in order to achieve equitable, and impactful outcomes for the community. Because that's exactly what community organisation is all about. Its purpose is to empower people and enhance the political, social, economic, and cultural well-being of a people. The last thing that I want to talk to you about, all of these ideas around culture and community, what do they all mean for our future? What do all of these ideas mean for our culture, yeah? What is the contribution of a diaspora to the national identity of New Zealand and what it means to live in Aotearoa? 
How do we empower our young people to own the korero and conversation around community? How do we leverage new notions of culture and community to develop a new collective? Now these questions, I genuinely don't know the answers to. But these are the questions that we're going to have to start considering as our collective composition shifts as a country and as a global community. Culture is changing. The need for community organisation is crucial. And starting right now, we have to understand that amidst all the chaos, amidst all the noise, there is much, much more that unites us than divides us. Our future is collective. What's your part going to be in that? Thank you very much.